If you love making beats but feel like you're not at the level you want to be at yet and you're getting a little impatient and want some tips on how to get better quick, this is the video for you. What's up, it's Eldre, and in this video, I'm gonna be giving you three real methods on how to get better at making beats fast. And I won't be giving you any of that cliche stuff. I'm not gonna tell you to learn music theory. I'm not gonna tell you to practice every day or to spend all day watching tutorials. These are three proven techniques that I've used over my career, which have led to me getting millions and millions of streams on my beats. And by the way, number three gets overlooked a lot, but it might be the most important one. Let's get into it. Oh yeah, and this video is sponsored by prodbyeldry.com, AKA me, but more on that later. Number one, and probably the most important one that's really had a huge impact on my life is recreating beats that you love. I know you're hearing this and you're like, yo, how the hell am I supposed to recreate All the Lights by Kanye West? I don't mean everything has to be specific details. You can even start with just recreating the drum pattern, or if you're somebody who's trying to get better at your melodies, recreating melodies, look up the chord progression, try to create that chord progression yourself. Um, if you're a sample based producer, look up what sample is used and try to replicate the chops in your favorite song that you're referencing. I personally do this a lot with drum grooves. Um, if you've seen any of my recent videos, I have been studying Jay Dilla. This recent video that you may have seen on my YouTube shorts, was heavily inspired by Jay Dilla. And in order to recreate that Jay Dilla sound, I literally dragged his track Thelonious into Ableton, tried my best to sync up the tempo, and then I also just tried my best to recreate that drum pattern as best as I could. His drum patterns are crazy, it was a little difficult, but eventually I feel like I kind of nailed it and then I was able to just, you know, put my own swing on it. Link in the description to pre-save that track, by the way. Not only does this help with drum grooves and melodies, but it can also help you with arrangement and structure. I know a lot of people have trouble how to arrange their beats. Another tip that I have on that, which falls under this category is making remixes. Making remixes has been huge for my career, not only because a lot of my remixes went viral and kind of were the keys to my success or whatever, but by simply taking the acapella of an already popular song and then using that structure to create a beat under it has helped me improve immensely. Everybody has a favorite producer, favorite artist, favorite song, favorite genre, whatever you're creating. I'm sure there's songs out there that you can learn a lot from by analyzing how it was created and doing your best to match that. And again, this isn't, we're not here to just blatantly copy things. It's all about taking elements, taking references, taking inspiration and putting your own spin on it and using this as a tool to just get better. I'm telling you, try it, it'll work. Number two, a little controversial, but it's 2023. Get over it. Use samples. If you want to get better faster, there's elements of production that you might not be good at yet. That's why I didn't say to learn music theory, because music theory is not quick to learn. That is something that takes tons of practice, hard work, studying, dedication, and you, you don't have time for that. Am I right? But no, in all seriousness, if you are learning to play guitar and you're just not as good as you want to be yet, feel free to get some guitar samples to put on your beats. It's not that big of a deal. If you are kind of struggling with your drum patterns and your drum grooves just aren't swinging and hidden as much as you would like them to yet, go download the LJ Drum Kit Volume 5 Preview Pack. Nice little plug, right? Yeah, LJ Drum Kit Volume 5, it's coming and it might just be the last drum kit in the LJ drum kit series. And as always, I always drop a preview pack for free beforehand, 10 loops using sounds from the pack, hi-hat loops, full drum loops, percussion loops, all that jazz. Here's a little snippet. Here's another snippet. It's completely free. The full drum kit is dropping September 25th. So yeah, check it out and get your lo-fi grooves bumping. Link in the description. And one somewhat advanced tip I'll give you when it comes to using samples as a learning technique and as a starting technique, a lot of times I'll find, let's say a drum break or a drum loop, and I'll start my beat with that drum break. And then I'll kind of chop it up, move things around and swap out different sounds. Sometimes, you know, you get a drum loop and the hi-hat is hitting a little too hard on the kick. So you need to bring in your own drum sounds. There's tons of ways to get creative with this loops, or you can just use them to start your tracks. And then once you get a solid groove going, you can start replacing things as you see fit whatever makes you happy. But I personally use samples all the time. Um, one day, one day I'll learn piano. I don't know, but until then I'm gonna be using samples and I'm gonna be using MIDI loops. 
until I can figure that stuff out. Now back onto the music theory side of things. I encourage everybody to learn music theory, but let me just give you a quick example. Me personally, I use samples all the time, but I do feel that I use samples more often because of my limited skills in the instrument and music theory department. But that being said, look at my accomplishments, look at my stats, look at everything I've achieved. Now imagine if I didn't do any of the beats that use samples, um, that I'm using MIDI, that I'm drawing in melodies. Imagine I waited to do all that until I learned music theory and was an expert at it or until I learned how to be super proficient on keys. Putting my career aside to learn all this stuff would have been counterintuitive. So again, learn it, please do, but don't let it stop you from making music and putting your stuff out into the world. Number three, the one that I said gets overlooked but might just be the most important thing to turn your beats from trash to fire like this. And that is mixing, 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 mixing. I am a big believer that mixing is one of the most important aspects of not making beats, but improving the quality of your beats for your listener. Because you could, a lot of people might already be really good at making beats. You might be good at making your own samples, drum patterns, or you're following the tips already from this video, recreating stuff, and you've developed a really nice skill set. But if your mix is trash, on the listener end, that's something that's hard to get over. Let's say you've been making a bunch of lo-fi beats and you're trying to get into playlists. Picture this, I'm a playlist editor. I'm listening to a bunch of beats, bunch of beats, bunch of beats. I hear one, I'm like, oh dang, this beat is really good, but uh, God damn, why is that hi-hat so loud? You know what I'm saying? So like simple things like that, your levels, your panning, your reverb, um, EQ on your bass notes, having it not be too muddy, not too harsh. All these different things that go into mixing are really important and can really improve the quality of your beats instantly once you get the hang of it. Now again, this is similar to music theory, but it's not as hard, it's not as hard. Honestly, if you want me to simplify mixing for you, it's good sound selection. So make sure whatever drums, whatever instruments you're using are already good quality. And two, it's levels. For me, it's all about the levels. Make sure your kick is loud enough. Make sure your snare isn't too loud. Make sure your hi-hats aren't too crispy, unless that's what you're going for, of course. And three, referencing. You just gotta reference other tracks. It's really that simple. If you're doing lo-fi and the goal is to get into a certain playlist, go to that playlist, listen to a bunch of their tracks, maybe rip them off YouTube, play that, play your track, play that, play your track, and try to match the levels so it has a similar sound. So that way, when the editors are scrolling through all these songs, yours doesn't stand out as a harsh sounding track that they're just gonna skip. Sorry if number three was a bit underwhelming. I know mixing isn't everyone's favorite topic, but if you follow those three things I said, you should get better at it, and I promise you this will increase the quality of your beats quicker than any of the other tips. All right, quick recap on the three methods. Number one, recreating beats or doing remixes. Number two, using samples. Download the LJ Drumkit Volume 5 uh, preview pack. Link is in the description. LJ Drumkit Volume 5 dropping September 25th. Mark your calendars. And number three, get better at mixing. Now, I know this title is all about getting better fast, capital F-A-S-T, but I would like to mention that slow and steady does indeed win the race. Definitely do all these things to accelerate your growth and accelerate your skills, but don't get too caught up on doing things too quickly. You know the old saying about quick money? Um, I don't know, look it up. Maybe there's some old saying about making quick money, but sometimes quick money isn't always the best money. You could flip stocks or you could invest in steady long-term ETFs. Shout out to my fellow Graham, Steph, and watchers, you know what I'm saying? And obviously all the cliche stuff still applies. Practice stay consistent with your practice and as long as you don't give up you can't fail so that's it for me i hope this video helped lj drum kit volume 5 dropping september 25th go download that free preview pack and cook up some stuff and send me some tracks you make with it you never know i might feature it in the next video i don't like that i did this but hopefully my editor puts like a like a little ding or like a little sparkle in my mouth or something peace <laughs>